Hello, today we're going to look at the idea of nanoparticles and this is for your GCSE chemistry only. It's not in the combined science uh, curriculum. But what do we mean by nanoparticles? Well, we mean we are talking about or we're talking about particles that have only a few hundred atoms. So these are very, very tiny particles indeed. But before we actually look at those in detail, we can look at two other sizes of particles. The first one here is called coarse particles. And these are often referred to as dust. So things like dust or pollen grains, these are the kinds of size we're talking about. We refer to them as PM10. And here are the sizes, the range of sizes in standard form. Now we use standard form when we're talking about very large or very small numbers, but in this case it's small numbers. So what does it actually mean? Well, if we take our 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6, we can actually show how big it is in meters. So if we, here we have our 2.5 and all we do is we move our decimal point six places to the left. Because we have 10 to the minus 6, we move it six places to the left, add our zeros back in over here, and then we see that 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 is actually 0 0.0000025 meters. So that's a very small number, and we often use standard form to show uh, very small numbers in an abbreviated way. What if we did the same with our 1 times 10 to the minus 5? So this is probably a good practice for you. Here's our 1, and it's remember to 10 to the minus 5 there. So we move our decimal point 5 places to the left. Add in our zeros, or put in our zeros, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 0.00001 meter. Okay, so standard form is often very useful to represent very large or very small numbers, and that's how we can show what they actually mean in this example. So we also have fine particles as well as our coarse particles, and we refer to those as PM 2.5, and there's the range of sizes for those. And then we have our nano nanoparticles, and I've actually described them as between 1 to 100 nanometers, or the 1 nanometer there is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, and 100 nanometers would be in the region of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. So as you can see, the larger nanoparticles are in the same sort of size as the smaller fine particles. Okay, remember these are all in meters. So our nanometers, we can also refer to those as PM1 as well. But these are our tiny kind of particles that we deal with, and nanoparticles are the ones that are important in terms of what we're going to look at for the rest of this video. Now, just to put everything into perspective, here's a scale to show the region of the different sizes of things. So our PM10, our coarse particles, or dust, would be in that region there, 10, min 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 6. There is our PM2.5, our fine particles, and our, and our nanoparticles, occupy that region there, 10 to the minus 7 down to 10 to the minus 9. Now, to give you an idea of how small these things actually are, if we look at 10 to the minus 10, and we've looked at this in a previous video in biology, I think, our atoms are in the 10 to the minus 10 region. If we're looking at viruses and bacteria, you can see that viruses are approximately about 10 to the minus 7 meters, and our bacteria in the region of 10 to the minus 6 meters. Obviously, these are not exact sizes, but in, these are the kind of rough sizes of these different things. So you can see how our particles compare with our bacteria, our viruses, and our atoms. And it's probably worth just putting in our millimeters, our micrometers, and our nanometers there on our scale. So we can see where they all lie in terms of the sizes of things. The next thing we need to look at is a property or a feature of nanoparticles that makes them so useful. Nanoparticles have a very high surface area to volume ratio. And again, this is something we've dealt with in biology, but worth revisiting for this topic here. We can look at the size of cubes because they're quite easy to work with in terms of maths. And we can link that with the surface area to volume ratio. So how would we work that out? In terms of our surface area, we know cubes have six sides. And to work out the area of one side, it's just the length times the width. So if you have a cube of side one centimeter, it would be one times one. And then the area of six sides would be one times one times six. So that would give us a surface area of six. And then to work out the volume, it's just length times width times height. height. So for a 
cube, it will be 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. If we were to work out the surface area to volume ratio, it's 6 to 1. And in, in what we can do is actually divide the 6 by 1, because the ratio can also mean 6 divided by 1. And that gives us an answer of 6. And in fact, for surface area to volume ratio, there are no units. So here's the rest of them done for you. Um, if we go up by a factor of 10, we can see the surface area to volume ratio reduces by a factor of 10. We can show that in a graph. So we've got length of cube side along the bottom and surface area to volume ratio along the side on the y-axis. And you can see that if we have a big cube, the large cube has a small surface area to volume ratio and the smaller cube has the large surface area to volume ratio, as you can see from that graph. It's not a linear relationship, so it's not a straight line graph, but you can see the effect of increasing the surface, sorry, increasing the size of the cube. Now, if we're talking about nanometers or nanoparticles, we can use the idea of the cubes because it works in the same way. But if we have very, very small particles, that means the surface area to volume ratio is going to be very large. It's going to be at the lower end of the length scale, so very high in the surface area to volume ratio scale. We can see that if we increase the size of the cube by 10, we decrease the surface area to, the, uh, to volume ratio by 10. So it goes down by a factor of 10. And if we go the other way, if we increase the size of the so I decrease the size of the cube, decrease the size of the cube by 10, by a factor of 10, we increase the surface area to a volume ratio by 10. Now, what if we had an object the size of a nanoparticle? In this case, we've got 10 to the minus 7. What would be the surface area to volume ratio? You can give that a go now if you want to. But if not, we would end up with a surface area to volume ratio of 600 million. And again, if we change that to standard form, that would be 6 times 10 to the power of 8. That's a very large surface area to volume ratio. And that's because the particles are so tiny that we get that large surface area to volume ratio, 6 times 10 to the power of 8. Now, this here helps explain some of the uses of our nanoparticles, which we need to be aware of. And those are listed here. The first one is in medicine. Now, we talked about the idea of drug delivery in a previous video where drugs could be packaged in nanoparticles. In terms of cosmetics, we can have creams and lotions that can use nanoparticles that can penetrate deeper into the skin. We've got sun cream, which absorbs UV. Cosmetics, we've already mentioned. No need to put it down twice. I have done that by accident. So we've said that one already. We can use it in deodorants, where we have nanoparticles that can either kill bacteria or they can absorb odor and that large surface area helps it to do that. And they can be used as catalysts, and catalysts speed up chemical reactions, and that large surface area helps them to do that. Now, we can look at one particular example of where this high surface area to volume ratio is really useful, and that is in our sun cream. So here is some uh, sun cream or sun tan lotion, and that helps to absorb UV, which is dangerous. The active ingredient there is zinc oxide, and zinc oxide will absorb ultraviolet light or UV light or rays, which can be dangerous for the skin. Now, if we use nanoparticles, the nanoparticles are, as we know, very, very small. And just to remind ourselves, they're in the region of 1 to 100 nanometers. That's 10 to the minus 9 up to 10 to the minus 7 meters. That means we're going to have a very high surface area to volume ratio. That means that high surface area is going to allow us to absorb more UV making the sun cream more effective, protecting us better from UV. And that also means we can use less cream to do a better job. There are some risks involved with nanoparticles, and those include the unknown effects of what happens if we breathe them in. So what's the effect if nanoparticles escape into the environment, into the air, and they're breathed in? What happens if they get into water? What effect will that have on animals? And if they are breathed in or uh, through lungs or if they're taken into the bodies of uh, animals in water, for example, fish through the gills, what issues might it cause if these nanoparticles get into cells? So there are some risks and uncertainties around the use of nanoparticles, and that tends to be more where nanoparticles are not incorporated into creams and things like that because they may be able to get into air and water. Okay, so quite a lot we've gone through here. We've described the 
different sizes of particles. We've done some maths in terms of standard form. We've looked at surface area to volume ratios and some uses of nanoparticles, but all important stuff. So uh, do go over it one more time if you need to. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.